Hello and welcome to Malware Analysis for Hedgehogs. Today we will be looking at two different samples. Both are different ransomware families and one is an old family, the Powerware ransomware. Made it into the news this week because it imitates Loki now. And uh, the Holy Crypt ransomware is a new family which also made it into the news this week. And <coughs> let's check it out. Um, I will be starting by using or checking the strings in these files. It's always it's one of the most easy things to do always, and um, um, often it has good results um, for for the first check. Holy crypt. We will start with holy crypt. Um, yeah, please. Um, make some. I need to look where I'm writing. Okay, holy strings dot txt. So here is our holy strings file. And the strings dot txt from system terms will print the strings in, in the order that finds it in the, in the file. So things that are later in the file will appear later here. And um, that's already interesting. That seems like this is using Python to do something. So Let's check out. Those are the imports, and here are some, as it seems, some Python functions that have to do with encoding. Uh, and that's interesting. Right here, you might you might uh, see why this is called holy crypt. It's actually a bad practice to use the name that the author of the file intended the malware to have, but I guess, well, since, since ransomware is so, so loud about its name and telling the victim uh, how it wants to be called, the, the victims will usually search for the names on Google and um, so the antivirus companies use those names for the ransomers, uh, although they don't do it for other malware usually. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this is a Python wrapper or install, some some kind of Python thing. And the first thing we need to find out is what was used to what application was used to wrap this file. Um, in my case I knew it from the news article. Um, but if you don't know it, you can still find out uh, with looking at strings and with research. So let's check this in the hex editor. Now we know the most interesting thing is in the end. So yeah, well, from just from experience, this already looks a bit like an archive. Um, this is uh, so dense here. This is like some high entropy area, and here in the end it. It looks similar to a zip archive with the listing of the files that are in there. So interesting. Um, and here are .pyd files in this archive. And those are Python DLL files. They are not written in Python. I think they are written in, in C usually and compiled in any way they are compiled to native code. and. Uh, yeah, these are PE files, DLL files, so um, in case you want to analyze them later. Now, what do we have? Okay. Um, if you check this in a, in a PE format viewer, uh, the report is done, it's still computing the visualization okay or oh, whatever I hear it is okay you will see that there's a huge overlay the overlay is often used by installers to save some data in there and the overlay is also high in its entropy so this is probably where the interesting data is so with the, the files that we want to look at and now you can check the overlay here the location is here and i already well since i knew from this 
I already built in a check for the signature of pi installer. So now we know it's pi installer. You won't find it with Dai, at least not in my setup. Uh, but I added this as soon as I saw that there's no signature for it. Um, but here's how you could have found it. Um, you go to the location of the overlay, since the overlay seems to be interesting. Okay, yeah. That's the start of it. And there's the signature, and this, this happens often, that there's some kind of signature at the start of the data that the installer is using. And often the installer itself also uh, uses its own name somewhere. In this case, that's that's not uh, that way. The pi installer is not in, in one of those strings. But we have here pyz. If you Google for pyz, you will find that this is a Python archive, similar to a zip archive. And you might find also in the first results in Google that this is commonly used by pi installer. So this is how you could have researched what you need to know. And also you will find certain extracting tools for those archives, like in this case, um, this one. <coughs> I will open this extracting tool in the command and it uses the uh, current working directory. So if I drag this right in here, uh, the extracted files will not appear on the desktop. So that's just why I do this. Uh, okay, holy crap. And it told us it has extracted files. There are lots of lots of files, just a few. I think more than 250 files in here. And well, that's actually where I got lost because for some reason I navigated right in here and I looked at all of these files. Um, those are .pyc files. This is Python bytecode. Um, despite most people telling you that Python is interpreted, um, it's actually not um, CPython, the, which is the most common language implementation of Python, is compiled to bytecode, similar to Java. And so you need to decompile this code. And that makes uh, the C Python implementation a hybrid of interpreted and compiled because it is compiled. Okay. Um, the these files, uh, if you wanted to look at them, you would need something like IDA or OLE debug. Um, they are just dynamic linked libraries. And uh, these files, you will just search for Python decompiler and find lots of lots of tools that do this stuff. Um, but in this case, the most interesting, the main um, script is here, uh, the holy crypt script. So sometimes uh, you just need to know where to look. Um, and for some reason, I overlooked this file. I don't know. I got kind of lost in looking at all the libraries. And here is our file. I checked the lines of code with it. Now it's 122, but if you count lines of code, you don't count the empty lines and the comments. You count really the code lines, and that's 97 in this case. It's a bit disappointing. Um, the file is like, you know, um, usually I expect a bit more. Um, it's it's almost five megabytes, and the main code is really just this. It's it's not much. A uh, huge part of it is this base sixty four string, and you can decode this. Let's just put it into another file. That's base sixty four. If you decode it, you will see that. Um, this is a an image, a JPEG, and that's our wallpaper ransom note that the Python script contains right in here. And yeah, well, that's 
actually all we needed to do. It's not much once you know how. <laughs> um, we will. I will execute this later so you can take a look at how it how it looks like if you are infected. Um, but now let's take a look at the powerware symbol. Now this is another interesting symbol. Okay, you can already look at this, and it's a bit smaller. Calls itself ry.exe for some unknown reason, and it found the .NET signature. So this is a .NET file, and here are strings that might be interesting to look at. Here's some high entropy area. Um, here are resources which might be interesting. Uh, the rest seems pretty empty. So it's it's black here and here, so it seems pretty empty. Um, yeah, so interesting areas are the blue ones here, and this, and the resources. <coughs> okay, um, dot net, yeah. Again. Okay, I click here in the main, so I'm in, at the entry point, there's a loader that executes some arguments. Let's take a look at the loader. What does it do? I don't know. So it tells something about PowerShell, posh 2 config, some script runner. So, and it um, checks the resources for something. Now, if you are there any other interesting things here? Well, it's quite small program. There's just this loader, and it loads some some PowerShell. So the resources are this. They are um, there are three resources. There's a DLL for running something for running a script. There's this uh, .NET DLL. That's probably nothing interesting and the scripts dot zip an archive again now we can dump the resources right here save uh, usually if you have an archive in a file you can just unpack it with for instance 7 zip but well in this case it doesn't really work it unpacked something else here I show you what it is uh, that's the well, that's a PE file that's in the, the um, .NET file, I guess. Let's see. Yeah. Um, just some .NET zip library. It's a library for handling archives, which it obviously needs, but it's uh, a harmless library. Nothing we are interested in. And the rest is still in there. The, the other resources. If you check this file, um, here's this. Okay. There's also well, well, I think it's a good idea to use the visualization right here. So then I'm s otherwise I will be searching endlessly for stuff that's interesting. Okay, so that's the resource dump. It's quite similar to no, not this one. This one. Check this. Um, it's just the the biggest part of this file of this p file is the the resources here. You can see that that only this part is um, not here. So yeah, interesting um, that we dumped the biggest part of the file. Um, now you can take a look at the resources. We know there's a, an archive for uh, a zip archive. So we just search for the magic number of it. Let's check this. And, and if it makes sense, we will we will just dump it. Oh, here it is. The fixed.ps1. That's a PowerShell script. PS. And 
you select from here to I don't know how long it is just do something anything I don't care and if there's stuff in the end no one cares we save it as archive and now we unpack it again let's see if 7zip does it this time and here it is that's the PowerShell disarm it <laughs> That's the PowerShell script, and here we are. Again, that's not much. I mean, okay, we have some additional code in the .NET file, but really, this is just kind of, well, somewhat like 50 lines of code. Um, we have our extensions here that will be encrypted by the ransomware, and Help instructions. That's the ran the the name of the ransom node for Loki. It appends to Loki, so it looks like Loki ransomware, and that is a base sixty four string again, which is the ransom node. So, hmm, yeah, <laughs> that's already everything we need to know. Now you can check this file for um, decryptability, you can check those those uh, scripts for how you can decrypt the files that were encrypted by the ransomware. Both are decryptable, there are decryption tools out there, so uh, but if you're interested in making one yourself, just check it out and, and try yourself. Um, yeah, I will not go into details right here. Um, Okay, now I promise you that I will execute those as well. So let's just do this and have some fun. Now already has a PDF uh, icon, which is very suspicious. Okay, please encrypt my files. File already exists, but should not. Huh? It has some problems from. Hmm. Interesting. Seems like it has some bugs that doesn't make it work here. Let's execute PowerWare. Now what happens? Please, we want some action. <laughs> yeah, and since Tesla crypt is ah here it is. That's the holy crypt one. Maybe Powerware does something similar. Uh, and HolyCrypt prepends encrypted to the files that it encrypts. Like this. And that's some, yeah, that's our ransom node, the wallpaper. Uh, Powerware, I'm not sure, did it do anything? Now I should have checked with sys internals, I guess before I execute it. P proc mon. No. no, not Pokemon. Explorer run as administrator. Great. Maybe I need to install PowerShell first, I don't know. Oh well, it's still running. I guess it needs some time. <laughs> so um I will not wait for it now. It's just like well, but it's similar to Loki. It it uses the same ransom node and the same extension. Just the files are not renamed like Loki does. Uh, Loki renames the file names to some ID, and then appends dot Loki. And uh, our PowerWare sample doesn't do it. So that's how you can differentiate both um, ransomware families in case someone is infected. Uh, generally, you should be suspicious of. So if there's a lucky copycat, um, all of them could be decrypted so far. There was one with auto it lately, like auto it lucky, auto lucky. Um, yeah, they try to get um, the same same out of it. Okay, and yeah, it, well, since Tesla Crypt is dead, um, the ransomware is that appears is, well, 
let's say the quality isn't that good anymore. Um, and there's uh, two, two uh, quite well good samples for that. Um, the What's new is that the Holy Script is written in Python. Haven't seen anything like that before. Um, and the PowerWare sample, well, PowerShell. So there's also uh, yeah ransomware written entirely in batch, and it's pretty good. So in good in the sense that it uh, works very well, and you can't decrypt it. So it really doesn't matter what languages you use. So um, to make something good or bad, but yeah interesting how how much well, or how less lines you need to do something that devastating to to other people so well i hope to see you in two weeks um i'm on vacation so uh have fun in the meantime and see you later thanks for watching